So, let me tell you something that you should have already realized by now about this fucking show you're listening to. This shit is supposed to be for mature audiences. As in grown-ups, mentally mature. It's supposed to talk about adult subjects, an adult frame of mind. It's not fucking that at all. This is two emotionally regressed, broken half-wits pretending to offer insight on movies. All they really offer you is an endless sexual perversion and a laundry list of personal paraphilia issues. You can make your own choices in life, but you have to choose this as entertainment. You know you're better than this. You have to know you are better than listening to Cinema Psyops. Forty-eighth consecutive week of Cinema Psyops. I'm your host, Court, the guy that is super fucking happy that we're not talking about a Joe D'Amato or Bruno Mattei lens scripted or anywhere near touch this movie that we're talking about this week. And my co-host, Matt, is super stoked about that as well. Thank the maker. Holy shit. <laughs> God damn. It's I, nice to get into some fucking just uh, straight up murdering for money and shit. Yeah. So I have a long history with said movie of Maniac Mansion or Murder Mansion or whatever you may call it. Well, oh, I, I look forward to hearing it. I basically purchased a bootleg um, DVD of this, but there are bootleg VHSs, right? Oh. 
Now, yeah, the, the, yeah. Boot, the bootleg DVD that I bought was, um, they are now gone, but it was from a place called Cinema Day Bizarre. And uh, they basically, this is what they, their bread and butter was, they would get films from overseas that have never had a US release and then put it to VHS and then eventually DVD for you. And oh. this was one of my purchases from them back when they existed, when I committed bootleggery in this way, because it was the only way that I could see it. And it was from, I think a, I think the print came from like a laser disc. And it was this version that you and I are watching tonight. Now, the first version of this that I've ever seen was a movie that just so happened to be a VHS tape under the title of Maniac Mansion, I think is what it was rendered under, which was also, big shock, a fucking bootleg VHS tape released here in the United States because it was never really legally released. As far, as far as I understand, it just was one of those films that like ended up, I guess, on TV for some folks, um, like on broadcast TV and stuff, because it didn't really have a copyright on it, so they just could kind of get away with it. Okay. Uh, sort of like what happened in Night of the Living Dead, right? I got gotcha. you. All right. But this version that I had seen is super chopped up and much shorter than the version that you and I are watching tonight. Oh, wow. So much so. this is already a pretty short movie. Right. And it's already got a lot of weird, like, plot developments that feel like they're coming out of nowhere. And we'll kind of talk about it when we get into the review. But there are some folks who literally say that from from the reviews that I've seen and then some of the descriptions of the movies that other folks have seen versions of this, they've clearly seen the severely edited bootleg version. Because they talk about how everybody just all of a sudden ends up at this mansion and there's an, like, you know, a crash. But you actually see parts of their lives and stuff that's going on leading to why they continue on in this journey before we get into that part. So that's kind of what I wanted to bring up here is we actually know what's going on a little bit more ahead of time. So you have a little bit more of a clue as to why these people are doing some of the things that they're doing. But in the earliest or most cut versions that you're going to see, um, there's even like, you know, those multi-pack DVDs that are like 50 movies for 20 bucks or whatever that they release that they used to do on DVD like way back in the day. Um, uh-huh. There's another version of I actually have a, that version of it on one of those discs. Because when you're a movie fanatic, Matt, and then people know that you're a movie fanatic, they buy you these like horror movie multi-packs thinking that A, you haven't already seen everything that's in that, and yeah. or B, maybe already bought that for yourself. Just, of course. Just they because, they're- right, they're, they're just trying to do something that's nice. But the thing is yeah. when you get to a certain level of obsessive physical media and or movie collecting and hoarding like I'm at I'm at the point where I'm almost movie hoarding <laughs> uh, yeah pretty much you you kind of are yeah. really <laughs> like at this point it's starting to become a sickness for the amount of movies that I am collecting like I'm I have I have more than I could possibly ever watch right now and multiple versions of just about everything I have nice <laughs> I mean that's Fucking but, right. not strange at all. You're all right. Don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah, I don't have a compulsion that I cannot control no. in some way, shape, or form. I've, you stop it. Listen, <laughs> if you got a collecty problem, then I got a drinky problem, and I'm not ready to admit that, Rhett, so you don't have a problem either. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, just to sort of digress this discussion just a little bit here, um, there, it shows up on these movie packs, and I have one of those, and uh, that version starts at pretty much everybody wrecking in the fog. Oh, okay. Which really, can you imagine how much more confusing? Using shit would be if that's where you start. Yeah, that would be fucking weird. Yeah, I don't know why that's the case, but apparently, like, and there's other stuff that's cut out as well. And all the stuff that's trimmed out is pretty much all the stuff you need to make any sense of the story at all. So there is a super trippy ass version of this that feels like Scooby Doo on even more fucking acid by the time you finish it. That would be fucking weird. Right. So I just want folks to know that you need to make sure that you are either got your hands on the Forgotten Gialli box set three that this was released in for the Blu ray print. Or or make sure that you have the complete version of the film. Because as confusing as our review is about to be, and we're trying to remember who was what and what was where and what's going on and whose car is that and all of this kind of shit, just remember that as confused as we are right now, if you watch an edited version of this, it's going to be even more confusing for you. Yeah, the way I do notes too, there's a whole lot of dudes, other dude, this one dude driving a strange car, you know? Yeah, like I've seen some other reviews where people did an edited version of this and they do note the character name names and some of the relationships and things like that. But I think the film kind of gets a little hallucinatory in some parts where I don't even think it really Some parts it starts off that way. <laughs> right. That's that's the thing is this entire film 
is really fucking trippy. And I think the entire film is trying to play with your perception of reality the entire time. Probably. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah. I mean, you as an audience, like it is trying to yeah. basically throw everything at you and just be like a freak out movie. And be like, hey, hope, hope you catch this. Whatever you catch, make a movie out of it. All right. Yeah. Like it's basically you're going to have to make sense of this yourself because, by the way, this is nightmare logic. You're living in a fucking dream from the moment this reel opens. Deal with it. That's basically what the movie's throw, telling you. We're going to throw a lot of shit at you. And whatever you catch, you make your own story out of this movie with it. It's a make your own story movie. It's really fun. It is probably close to a choose your own adventure and you can interpret it pretty much any way you want in any direction yeah. that you want. And that's kind of what makes it super fun for me to watch. Um, yeah, it's a fun time. It, it was a fun watch. Right. I bought the bootleg DVD that had the complete version of the film because I needed to see a completed version of the film. And the only reason yeah. I knew that that completed version existed is when the Nashi cast covered this as a Beyond Nashi episode probably another decade ago. <laughs> Nice. I know that I've seen the VHS of it. It's just one of those things where I saw it and it didn't fully register with me as a movie and I couldn't make any sense of it. Listen, man, we're fucking old now. All right. That's just the way it is. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to cut a lot of that shit out. It doesn't fucking matter. But what I'm basically (laughs) getting at is I'd seen it once when I was a kid and pretty much forgotten the name of it and didn't register other than some of the weird shit that I remembered happening in the movie. Um, Okay. But then seeing the bootleg DVD that I bought of it um, about a decade ago, give or take, maybe a little bit more. <laughs> uh, after hearing the Nashi cast do a review and remembering that I'd seen the film and decided to go ahead and watch the, you know, the extended cut of that and to find it some way. And, and so I did. And now we have a Blu-ray print of it that we're going to cover on this show, which is your first time watch. And this is the fifth time that I've watched it, counting the review for the show. Mm-hmm. And I'm still confused as shit, so I hope you can explain it to me. Well, maybe, maybe we'll figure some things out. We'll go on a trip. <laughs> I'm positive that the Nashi cast, because this was in their earlier days when they would go through a film piece by piece, second by second, minute by minute, yeah. and describe to you what was happening and explain things to you, uh-huh. which, which made it to where you didn't really need to understand what was going on in the film when you watched it because they, they explained it for you. Why do I need to think? <laughs> I, want, I want the Nashi cast to do my thinking for me. Right. So what I'm getting at is our review is going to blow. Go find their episode on this and then there you go. come and, back and to come us Come back after. for the PSYOP news. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, come back and we'll have some fun together where we <laughs> talk and make dick and fart jokes over top of the movie review. Woo! All right. Now we're getting into it. That's my kind of party. Stick your dick in the mashed potatoes. Well, while Matt's got his dick stuck in the mashed potatoes, here's the Legion Patreon ad. And this week, we're going to have all graveyard-themed music, starting with Tom Waits whistling past the graveyard after this. This will keep you quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You caught me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room.
Tom Waits with Whistling Past the Graveyard, and Tom Waits has forgotten more about producing odd music than I will ever know. <laughs> yes, that is, yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> and if you're listening on the main feed and not the Pirate Radio Edit, you've got something that I will try to evoke the spirit of Tom Waits, but come on, guys, that's a tall fucking order to fill. Yeah, it's, I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> Just go to YouTube, check out Tom Waits Whistling Past the Graveyard if you want to hear the song instead of the bullshit I'm playing on the main feed for you. Or you can just subscribe to the Pirate Radio Edit if you got a couple bucks. And it's for uh, go, the brand. <laughs> go to the Patreon and support Legion Podcasts. I'm not even sure. I think the $2 level ought to get you this. So <laughs> at least it should. So go for it. Go for it. I'm done Move selling ahead. the head. <laughs> okay, Devo, I'm done selling the Patreon. Let's do the review. All right. Yeah, because we have no trailer that would uh, work in any sort of sense. So yeah, it's uh, all sound have... effects and just quick cuts. Yeah. Uh, Murder Mansion. AKA Maniac Mansion, my favorite Nintendo uh, game. So we have some peeps are driving around. Uh, well, a dude on a motorcycle. Not really a motorcycle, moped. More moped, right? Is it a motorcycle? Uh, it's like both. Nah, it's it's like one of those mini motorcycles where uh, it's yeah, not. It's not a moped, but it's 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 like a smaller micro motorcycle. Yeah, it's like a smaller engine motorcycle. It definitely is a motorbike. The motor's right in between his legs. True. You know, like it does have that style for like a motorcycle that would have it feels like we're really going on about this motorcycle more than the movie <laughs> well i mean i'm high as shit and you got me talking bikes so <laughs> uh let's see here i know i have about an hour before that edible kicks in then we're rolling fucked um, <laughs> so anyway uh uh, one of the guys driving, uh, he's driving with this younger lady, and he tries to get fresh with her, but she, you know, by grabbing her leg, she moves the hand. She ain't into it. Fuck that noise. Uh, they stop at a shop, and uh, the, or they got a little restaurant. And the motorcycle dude, everyone's there. And the motorcycle dude, he's talking to the lady that was riding with the creepy dude, and she complains about the dude getting fresh and all that, and she decides to leave with him on his motorcycle. Well, the creep man, he tries to stop him, says they're, uh, that she needs to ride with him because there could be danger. Now, they tell him to fuck right off and they take off. So, you know, good for them. That guy was super fucking rapey. Oh, yeah. Way rapey. Way rapey. Super rapey. Like, way even before he put his hand on her leg. Like, yeah. even before he made the move, like, he just had greaseball vibes. The way he, like, popped the door open for her and, you know, just the whole situation. I was like, lady, do not get in that car. Yeah, right. Exactly. Later, the other couple who was driving Ken in the motorcycle with around them they're more of an older couple you know they appear like they should be together well they come up onto a mansion uh as they're walking in uh they kind of make mention of these other people who are sitting there kind of just having a lunch uh these people seem a little bit like assholes because they, they were like or the least the guy does because he's like uh uh she's like oh look it looks like she has guests and he goes yeah no one important and you're like oh jesus all right well anyway uh peeps are talking and that's our first clip Honest, Need a call. The widow of Elsa's lawyer. Gossip. It's true. Parasites. All they do is live off others and never say anything pleasant. I don't think you're being fair. Who's he? He's a lawyer's partner who married his widow. It's true. Some men will do anything in order to further their careers. Give me a card, will you, Megan? There's no doubt they're enhancing our reputations. In any case, he's looking after Elsa's affairs now. Go on. I want to know why Elsa's husband isn't here. He's away on a business trip in Sauron. Poor old Ernest. I must hate being a runaround for a businesswoman. I know I'd loathe it. Yes? Elsa? Ernest? What's happening? I'm expecting you. My lawyer's here already. You're still up in Sauron. Ernest, but that's absurd. There's nothing I can do, Elsa. The lawyer's away, apparently, on some very personal matter. And he won't be back until late tonight. Then I suppose you'd better wait. It's important to authenticate that signature. If we don't present the document tomorrow, we lose the option. All right. See you later. Yeah, now imagine not having any of this story as to why they're traveling even further and in, on the night that they're traveling. Yeah, exactly. How much more fucking confused you would be. No. Oh, yeah. Big time. Yeah. I totally understand it. Well, um, we see that that guy, the husband, he is in this little restaurant. Well, so is the two young, the young people who are on the motorcycle. They're eating and they're trying to figure out if they're going to stay the night or keep driving uh, throughout the night. And the girls, like uh, the young ladies, like I really have no problems with just 
driving all night. And so he's like, all right. Um, then we see the du- the husband who's on the phone. He leaves. Um, the young guy with the motorcycle, he gets directions and pretty much gets the line. You don't want to go down that road. He's like, there's two roads. Don't want to go down the other road because the, the fog will, will get uh, up there late at night. Even though it's a shorter road and you'll get to where you're going sooner, it's... It's going to be way too foggy. Make sure you're taking this other area. There are two roads. One, yeah. the longer, more gentle grade slope paths yeah. that will get you there guaranteed alive. And yes, that's the entirety of the name. We're trying to come up with something shorter. Mm-hmm. And then on the other hand, we have the shorter, certain eternal damnation path, which, by the way, a fog will set in and suck you into a netherworld should you get stuck in it. Yes. All these things are fat. <laughs> I mean, like the descriptions are almost that flatly but also hyperbolically dramatic the way he describes it. We're like legit. The fog is like something you should be afraid of. The way he describes it, it's like you do not want to fuck around in that fog. Legit, just don't want to go down that road. <laughs> I mean, he pretty much all but says it in Judd's voice. Yeah. Listen, sometimes dead is better, all right? Yeah. I, I was think thinking, we all know that. I was thinking the exact same thing because when he says it, I'm like, Jesus, he even kind of sounds like Judd. Right. And I was like, Jesus, all right. Well, there you go. Uh, everyone's having fun now. <laughs> And the dumb kids only hear shorter, so that's why they want to take it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They just hear, oh, it's short, so it should be fine. So anyway, we see um, the husband who was on the phone. Well, he's talking to a young lady in a room who's in bed naked. That's our next clip. Your life, so I guess you can do what you like with it. I guess so. But if you had any dignity, you'd leave your wife. You know damned well I've always loved Elsa. Yes, I know, all right. Right up until last year. Elsa loved me, too. We were happy together. I hope that one day we will be again. It's not that easy. Time you faced up to it. Hmm. Up to what? It's Elsa's money you love. That's why you won't leave her. Hmm. You're wrong, Ellen. I have a fortune of my own. Yes, you did ten years ago. But you threw it all away on drinking women. Ernest, I'm sorry. Don't get mad at me. I don't mean it. I'm just made like that. I must be a silly idiot. Because I love you. Yes, I know. But why doesn't she treat you the way I do? You've become a household pet. All she has to do is whistle. She changed completely when her father died. She was suddenly responsible for the enormous fortune he had left her in his will. I don't know how it happened. But within a few days, she was transformed into a hard-headed businesswoman obsessed with deals. And she denies you your conjugal rights. She hasn't let you near her bed in months. Forgive me, Ernest. Forgive me. No need to be angry. Where do you think you're going? You mustn't hate me. I'm a fool for you. Hold me. I adore you. And I can't help it, though I know it bores you. What's money, anyway? Try paying the bills, and you'd know. Holy fuck, does she get clingy fast. Yeah, man, she's, uh, uh, this dude must do something right, because she is way into him. Even Uh, in the capacity that she can get him in, only because his wife currently won't let him touch her. Yes, uh, and so we see there is strafe. There's places for strafe, you know, all that kind of stuff. Do we ever see Ellen again? Is this the only reason? No, this is the only time you see her. Yeah, like, okay, I just, I thought so. But she never comes back. There's no purpose other than showing and that the husband is cheating on her and this backstory we needed to hear. Yes, and and, and kind of the, you know, how their relationship has deteriorated. Yeah. And money is the root of their problem, apparently. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Well, the young couple, they're uh, back on the bike. And, of course, they took the wrong road. They didn't. They didn't want to go down that road but they're going down that road they took they the foggy the- death road it's called foggy yeah. death road they finally shortened it foggy death road and foggy death road and uh, guess what it's foggy it's shocking and they can't really see anything they stop and as they're looking at a map they see a car coming they try to flag it down but the car of rolls royce almost runs uh the uh almost runs over the guy on the road and you can um, kind of make out there are two people in a car like a giant chauffeur and a smaller person in the back yeah in that rolls royce yeah then we cut back to Elsa, the other dude's wife, uh, she is with uh, she is with that rude couple from the car earlier, uh, and she tells them that she needs to go get her husband the town over so they can get the 
documentation. And the guy says, well, we should go with you. That way I can just grab the document that we need and we can get it out of the, where it needs to go in a rush because I will help with their business plans. So they decide to follow her in their own car. The rude guy's like their lawyer or something. And yeah. he's going to, like, he has the power to be able to notarize whatever's going on with these documents and make them official and turn them in. Yeah. And he has to get it someplace. So now imagine not knowing any of this either. Yeah, right? (laughs) So, all right. So the fog is bad. No one really can see anything. The asshole husband can't see anything, but he's still driving super fast because he's dummy. And at this point, they actually crash their car into another car. And that car is actually the creeper dude from earlier. They crash into him. Um, The Elsa, she's still driving and she almost crashes, but she's able to miss uh, this wall that she almost crashes into. Uh, We cut back to the couple on the motorcycle. They, for somehow, they just come across a guy walking down this lonely path in the fog carrying a huge sickle and they decide this is the guy to get directions from and believe it or not I don't, how these people aren't murder fodder for any horror movie I won't know but they found the one nice guy carrying a giant sickle down a foggy trail and he gave them good directions of how to get the hell out of there. Turns out not everyone carrying a sickle is a homicidal maniac. Some of them are just farmers who may be doing trimming about the edge of the road. Yeah, I, I agree but just in the foggy night it just i'm just saying these people are very lucky <laughs> <laughs> yeah in the jackpot of all the things that you could run into in a dark and foggy night on the forbidden foggy death road helpful farmer with sickle is not one of them i'm telling you right now 99.9 percent of the time these people are dead they are the 0.01 percent percenters <laughs> <laughs> they are so utterly fucking lucky yes they really they really you know don't ever play the lottery again you used all your luck for this <laughs> <laughs> yep it's clearly all gone as we will see later yes um So then, uh, after that, um, the Elsa, we cut back to Elsa, and she's exploring the cemetery, and she sees these two beings. One looks like a little lady, old lady, and one looks like a very large, so fur-looking guy, and they come after her, but she runs away. Then the young couple, they're riding their bike, and they crash again. Or, not again, they just crash. They're able to get up, they're not really too badly hurt, and the lady finds them, and that'll be our next clip. What's the matter? What happened? I'm being pursued. There's no one pursuing you. Don't you hear it? What? I can't hear anything. Sort of deep sighing. What happened to you? I don't really know. I was driving my car in the direction of Soren. And lost your way in the fog. Exactly. Same thing happened to us. Only we were heading for Miller. Evidently, you took a wrong turning, just as we did when we left the main road. No. No, you're wrong. I'm sure it was the right one. Then suddenly I found myself in a cemetery. (laughs) I couldn't see anyone or hear anything out of the ordinary. Are you sure that... Yes, quite sure. First of all, there was this horrible sound like someone breathing, harsh and loud. Then all at once, a man appeared. His face was hidden, but he was wearing the uniform of a chauffeur. He was, he was enormously tall. And in the middle of his chest, he had a... Well, a, a, well you think it's my imagination. And maybe it is. Tell me, was the man in uniform alone? No. There was an old woman in black with him. You don't believe it. You must think I'm crazy. No. Oh, I wouldn't blame you. But I'm not subject to hallucinations. No, no, of course not. We don't think you're crazy. It's all right now. I promise. You've obviously had a nasty shock. The only thing that really makes any sense is that your car has broken down. And here we are, all three lost in a fog. What we're going to do about it, I don't quite know. The map's not very encouraging. We don't seem to be on it. Well, I wouldn't let that worry you. But there's one good thing. We're near a cemetery. The dead are buried by the living. So there's got to be a village somewhere in the neighborhood. You weren't thinking of going through it? No, we'll walk around the wall until we come to the gate. The village must be on that side. 
All right. And that's the end of the first 20 minutes. So this setup, I know that there's a couple of the accidents and things that happen, but for basically the main reviews that I've seen is the people focus in on them getting to the mansion that we're about to find in the next 20 minutes after all these car crashes happen. Like there's no discussion or even mention of the stuff that we've had that's already kind of set up the story ahead of time. And like a lot of the reviews that I've seen or a lot of the people that mention things or they how the movie starts is the the complaints are that we have no idea how all these people are just traveling in a foggy night and end up at this mansion when in fact it is a wife and on her way to meet with her husband for business paper stuff and her would-be lawyer or somebody like that his wife they're all rushing to try and meet a deadline on this paper the biker and the lady that's riding with him are in a rush because she just wants to ride the whole night so that's why they took the road that they're on the drunk molester guy is drunk and pissed off and driving a sports car and probably just was on that road anyway and that's that's how he ended up there as well so we know all of that we know why they're all there and why they're all going it doesn't really seem like random happenstance they all just decided to try and take what they heard was the shorter path even though they may have been warned about the fog some of them weren't some of them were already on the road and it hit yeah that's what it seems like yeah Uh, so all the reviews that i've seen where people complain about how it seems like it's just random happenstance no it really isn't they all took this road. This road is apparently known to be foggy because someone is warned that this will happen. Like, you don't want to take that road at night because it gets foggy every night. Yeah, I mean, literally the guy says it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, a, like a lot, a lot. Like, he's like, look, it's a death fog, okay? It's got Wait, a death listen, fog. a lot of people die on that road. I'm trying to help you here. <laughs> yeah, he's like, it's got a death fog. His rods it's and his good. neck are just popping out when he says it. <laughs> he's just got a death fog. He's harbaging the fuck out of this road, but the people take it anyway who who do talk to him we don't know maybe just some of the other people were just already on the road because we're only really following the uh main lady the wife who just inherited a bunch of money and her lawyer and uh his wife we're following them primarily when we get on the road here and then we see the uh biker and his lady and they're apparently coming from the other direction where the husband is so they get caught coming the other way and run into the fog later at night if that's does that sound about right and then they all just kind of converge in the same place right around this cemetery but they all crash on different parts of it. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, it's not... I don't know why there are reviews where people are... I've seen reviews where people complain about how it's so confusing. Unless it's that I know there's a shorter version out there and I kind of remember like them all just converging on the fog and like having this accident. But I was just like, hey, they're traveling on this road. This happened on this road. It's foggy. So what? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need to know why they're all there. You know? Yes, the the motivations later on in the movie, yes, you're going to need to know why they're all there because otherwise the motivations for everything that's about to happen make no sense at all that i can kind of get it all just gets weird yeah but i just wanted to stress that that there's like this whole entire 20 minutes this is there's a lot of setup and a lot of stuff being thrown at you but if you pay attention it's really not that confusing as to how they all end up here yeah it's true because they're they're, just the the biker and his lady are coming from the other direction and so was the guy that's in the sports car because they were all heading the same direction and that's how they ended up on the road they're coming from the other side and they basically hit somewhere in the middle right by the cemetery yeah pretty much okay and the reason that this is working so well is because the people know this area, but they should have known that it was going to get foggy, but they took the road anyway, thinking they would be okay, or that they'd be able to beat it, is what I'm guessing, for the most or part. It's, it sounds like a lot of timing issues. A lot of things have to happen fast, so they just don't have time to go around. <laughs> right. Whatever whatever it is, they're all in a hurry. They all take the death, the foggy death Guess road. Guess what? If you, if you tell me that the one road is quicker, but it has a death fog, I'm going to be late for whatever the other shit it is i don't care it's fine <laughs> <laughs> right but basically what happens is they run into each other because they're in a hurry at the same time as the death fog hits and that's where it yes. happens and each of the accidents happen because of that it's very particular and very precise and it's not as random as people are trying to make it out to be it just so happens that you know when you drive on a foggy road like an asshole in a hurry it's probably a one lane road you're going to run into somebody doing the same coming in the opposite direction eventually these are facts <laughs> and just so happened that they did it near or right around the cemetery and yes. the manner that we're about to hit where uh-huh. murder's going to take place. So let's go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now we start the next 20 minutes. Um, they kind of explore the area and they find a Rolls Royce uh, 
and it's the same kind of car that almost ran them down, and the Rolls Royce looks like it crashed in the cemetery, it'd be the kind of car that would have a dressed up person and another lady maybe, you know, as the passenger. But apparently it's older up- because it's got a lot of, like, uh, soot and stuff built on built up on it, and yeah. it's kind of fucked up and rusty looking, too, or they say that it's, like, been there a while after it crashed into the wall. Yes, yeah, something like that. Um, they come upon the mansion, a mansion, and they come to the front door, and there's the creepy dude already inside. He has a gun. Also inside are that older couple, and they all talk about what they're all doing there in our next clip. Someone was trying to break in. As soon as he saw us, he made off and disappeared into the fog. He seemed to be wearing uniform. Yes. The sort of uniform a chauffeur might wear. Yes. Boots to the knees. Boots, you said? Certainly. I must admit I too was lost. Temporarily. But I know I would soon have found the road to Millen if these two hadn't crashed into me. It wasn't my fault. I'm both. sure it wasn't, but the fact remains, we're stuck here now. Quite true. The fog isn't usually this enveloping. It'll be gone by morning, I'm sure. If you'd care to remain here tonight, you are most welcome. There are only three bedrooms available, however, and I'm afraid they haven't been aired for some time. Miss Clinton very kindly helped us after the accident. I blew the horn of my car. And I heard it. So I went to see what was going on. Where are we? In an abandoned village around 15 kilometers from Millen. Any chance we could get there tonight? The visibility's nil. I personally wouldn't attempt. Why don't you sit down, Miss Clinton? Tell me, how did you get out here? On a bicycle. By a path that goes straight through the woods. But I'm sure I'd never find it again now the fog's so thick. I might find it on my motorbike. That's idiotic. Aren't you coming? How did you find yourself here? I must have taken a wrong turn. I obviously turned to the right by mistake. No, you turned left all right. But instead of carrying straight on, you took another turn that brought you here. But we suddenly found ourselves in a cemetery. There's a network of small roads leading to the valley. You took the one that comes to the cemetery, but luckily you found your way here. And now you know how easy it is to get lost. Why didn't you turn back to Millen when you saw the fog beginning to come down? It seemed more sensible to spend the night down here. You see, this is my house, and I often come here, though... I live in Millen. What does surprise me is that Someone like you should lose your way when you know the area so well. But I... I'm a good physiognomist, generally. What does that mean? I've seen you many times. I don't remember ever having seen you. We belong to two different worlds. I'm not surprised to hear you say that. I keep having the sensation that we've crossed the frontier between the real and the unreal. I've never heard anybody mention this place before. That's not surprising. The inhabitants abandoned it years ago. I imagine they had a very good reason for doing so, don't you think? Of course, there are a lot of stories. The country folk around here are superstitious. A mysterious epidemic occurred. They say the victims died by being bitten in the throats by a vampire who drained their blood. In any case, everyone left the village. I heard the 12 people died in one night. And when their bodies were found the following morning, Their relatives buried them here in the cemetery. And then everyone left this place forever, abandoning their houses, their land, everything they owned. Oh, God, do you hear that? It's coming from in here. Please, don't open it. It's years since I went down to the cellar. The last time I saw a rat... I'm terrified of rats, so I keep that door bolted. And the electricity's been cut off tonight. It makes me a little nervous. Well, if that's a rat, it's a damn big one. I'll try to kill it with my gun. Open the door now. Please. No. My nerves won't stand it. 
I beg you not to open that door. All right, as you wish. Well, whatever it was, it's gone away. I've noticed that you have an interest in that family portrait. It's Julia Clinton. Yeah. She resembles you a lot. And my aunt was a very eccentric woman. She was a witch, so they say. Maybe that's why she made a collection of all those weird pictures. It might explain. In actual fact, I don't know anything for certain. I was in this house long after everyone else deserted the place. And there were only those graves out there in the cemetery to show that people had once been here and had the life drained out of them by a vampire. Did she inhabit the place alone? No, she found she had to employ a man to act as valet, gardener, chauffeur. He was really extremely tall and ugly. But she trusted him and evidently drove her Rolls Royce very well. Until one day he got drunk and crashed it into the cemetery wall just outside the house. They were both killed immediately. Both killed? Yes, in 1942. She had her head crushed. Jesus fucking Christ. Right. Well, um, they make mention there uh, that uh, of how they died and including the fact that Elsa had said she had seen something in the man who was coming after her chest. Well, she checked. And then, well, what they said at the end there is that the steering wheel went into the driver's chest. Um, and so Elsa has an episode. She runs out of the, the building, uh, but they, you know, they're able to get her back inside. Um, the kind of asshole dude says, that uh, these kind of outbursts have been normal since her father died. Uh, it was a scandal when she died as he died in bed with one of her friends. Um, the lady of the house is taking care of Elsa in her room and when the uh, creeper walks, it gives her a tranquilizer to help her sleep. A uh, creeper comes walking in and uh, he's like, hey, you ladies need any help? And she's like, nah, you can go ahead and get the fuck out of here. So he does. He gets to his own room where he's going to stay the night. There's a lot of creepy paintings and everything thing and he starts getting panicky all those paintings Uh, by the way are Hieronymus Bosch paintings okay and every bedroom has one of his paintings and they're fucking horrific and really really cool but still fucking horrific yeah you don't want Bosch in a place you sleep obviously unless you're me if you're me you could probably (laughs) sleep just fine with a Bosch hanging right above you (laughs) yeah but you're fucking weird (laughs) like I'm gonna argue no I'm not yeah (laughs) um so the groups, are, you know, every particular group, they're all getting ready for bed. Uh, Creeper really starts losing it. And in his room, like those paintings, everything's just bothering him. Um, the young couple, actually, they check out the forbidden door. And the, the dude's like, you know, I just don't buy her story. Because all of this is, you know, just, it's he it goes, it's pretty unbelievable for this to be her story. Because the door is so new. And it's not like, it hasn't been closed for as long as she says it has. Yeah, and he columbos de- the fuck out of everything yeah. that she says. And he's determined to check that shit out and that's the end of that 20 minutes. All right, we've got a lot of story that's being laid out here. The first 20 minutes we have all of the drama as to why these people are all in a hurry, but that's all over now. They're all stuck in the fog, the death fog on Foggy Death Road. Yeah. They are in the murder mansion just adjacent to the vampire haunted cemetery that, by the way, this is all due to a witch who is the ancestor of the girl who is currently visiting the home. This is her ancestral home, which is abandoned, but she still comes back to. And the driver of said witch and witch died in a car accident, but they left the car where they crashed in the cemetery and everybody else abandoned it because of vampires. Um, but the bodies were removed and buried somehow. And the driver apparently has a steering wheel embedded in his chest, which we did kind of see and we didn't really dwell on or talk about because the film doesn't go super close. When I watched it on my projector for the first time with this Blu-ray, I could kind of tell, yeah, he's got a steering wheel kind of stuck in his chest. Yeah, and he's got red <laughs> eyes. Yeah, that like kind of glow. Like they, they depending upon um, what where they have it set up in the scene, you have like glowing red eyes at certain points too. Yeah. Yeah. There's some really creepy stuff that they're laying down here, and it feels like they are doing some supernatural stuff, and for a moment you're wondering, maybe these people are all dead, and this is just some kind of weird purgatory where they're all stuck like exterminating angel style or some shit. Yeah, right? Some, Yeah, maybe they're all dead already, and this is just their hell. It's together. Right, Oops. which makes it really fun to watch this spooky stuff with that in mind, where it's like, maybe this is just, this is just their eternity now. Maybe they are all dead, and they just play out the same bullshit drama over and over again right (laughs) 
And if so, fuck them. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm really digging it so far. All this weird yeah. gothic stuff, like the ghost stories that she's telling in the manor, like this is classic gothic style horror, like real uh, Mario Bava Black Sabbath kind of shit going on in this right now. You know, like, mm-hmm. it, it's real spooky and real fucking gothic, and I'm really fucking feeling it. And like everything's really just into it. really off putting. And so, yeah, it's kind of enjoyable. Yeah. And it's off putting in a way where you're like, oh, these people are fucked. Like, you're not scared for yourself. You're just like, oh, these people have clearly made a bad choice and they are fucked. And you know it's mm-hmm. coming. You're just waiting they, for it. They all took the fucking fog of Death Road. So, what do you want from us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't go down Foggy Death Road on the night of Foggy Death. Yeah. It's that's, we'll, you know, you don't do that. Things are going to be all right. <laughs> Unfortunately, the night is always Foggy Death Night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. F- foggy Death Night is the night you want to stay inside. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I'm ready to move on. All right. Next 20. So the young folks, they check out, they go inside the forbidden area, and they see no scratches on the door. So he's like, it's not a mouse. There's no scratches on this door. Um, we see uh, some peeps. They're all sleeping. And then we also see someone walking in the woods. Uh, the young couple, they leave the little area, the door, and they're back in the main hall where they're sleeping. And they decide to get down. So they're going to get down. This is uh, really bold of them, man. Like stripping yeah. down and just going at it when there's yeah. like a loft area where they could be watched Roman style from above. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but, you know, to be young and proud of your body, I suppose. I just don't know what that's like. Yeah, exactly. Well, the creepy dude, he has a nightmare and he wakes up and he's like, oh, fuck. OK, I, uh, you know, he, he's getting up. Uh, he uh, he walks around and he sees the young people, young people sleeping together. They're they're dumb boning now. Now they're just in the afterglow of laying there. Uh, then uh, we cut back to uh, Elsa. She remembers a ball uh, and her dad is dancing with a younger lady. Uh, creepy dude then goes into Elsa's room and she wants him out and he like screams at him to leave and he calls her a man hater because he's a bitch and then he leaves. She does not want you, you drunk piece of shit. That doesn't mean she's a man hater. She just means she doesn't want to fuck you. Yeah, no one wants you. Dude, you know, no one wants you, you rapist piece of shit. (laughs) I know you're yelling at him, but I'm the only other person here. Oh, sorry. (laughs) That could seem unsettling. (laughs) Words hurt, Matt. Words hurt. (laughs) <laughs> she uh, again remembers this ball and talking to her father, and that is our next clip. Everything all right, Dad? Pretty good. I feel more like your brother. You're looking cute tonight. You wouldn't think so if you were sober. I'm only your daughter. Oh. May I have a glass of orange? Ah, you may look good, but you're a foul move. I admit you're a handsome man, Dad. Oh, thanks. But one thing gives away your age. That's interesting. Do tell. Your preoccupation with little girls. Oh, that. <laughs> your behavior is disgusting. You were propositioning that child. Adlai is no child. She's your age. I know that. Today it's Adeline. It'll be her little sister next. Like me to find out if she likes old men too? No, thanks, Elsa. I manage alone. I don't usually sleep with my daughter's college friends. At least, not many. <laughs> I take it you had a row with Ernest again. Yes, I did. I'm happy to hear it. Let me warn you. He's a scoundrel. A good for nothing. Ernest is extremely rich. That's what he likes you to think. He'll get through his inheritance and... Sorry, I beg to differ. Have it your own way. I warned you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have someone waiting. A martini, very dry. Ernest, I didn't expect you. I'm glad you could make it. Really? Do you want to start again? I don't see why not. Be reasonable, Elsa. I'm no longer at that age when love can blind one. I see you as you are. Capricious, dominating, a spoiled child. You mean you don't want me? Yes, yes, I do. I'm crazy about you and you know it. But your behavior is unbearable, Elsa. Oh, I'm not so awful. All right, then. Let's try again. Come on. Let's go. And here's a whole bunch of backstory. Yeah, so you know, there's there's obviously issues with her 
murdered her father. He's a <laughs> rich know? old man who will not be told that he can't sleep with women that are his daughter's age. You know, part of me thinks that's a problem. I mean, it's very clearly a problem, and it's also something that's uh, what I would call a Trumpism. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Although, wouldn't a Trumpism be you want to date your daughter? Well, he did pretty much. He did pretty much say that as well in uh, that yeah. clip. He alluded to it rather lavishly in a way as if he didn't see a problem with it. Some fucked up people in this world, my man. When you have m- enough money to completely just buy off anybody that you want and you can make things go away, you would pretty much not be shocked at the depths of depravity with which you would explore to just see what you can get away with and what your money can buy you. I'm for a fact not surprised about what some people do in their worlds, you know, fucking assholes. Yeah, well, let's move on. Yeah. I mean, we don't need to get into that show. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is not psychosemantic cast. We don't need to do a complete breakdown about money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Redistribution. How money can cause problems. <laughs> All right, well, they uh, those two leave the ball, and they decide to head back to her place. Um, then we cut back to the present day, and she's having a cigarette, and then she goes right back into the past. It was a weird cut. I don't know why they did it. They in the Back in the past, they go into her room. She strips down and lays on the bed and he caresses her and she thinks about uh, how like this is all happening in her dad's bed she she even says it you know I'm doing the guy you don't like dad in your house in your own room Uh, back to the so obviously there's some issues there Um, you think (laughs) so then uh, we get back to the uh, present day again and uh, the creep is getting drunk he's just he's got a flask he's just getting way hammered Um, he goes goes to the host lady's room and she tells him to come on in and then we see the chauffeur figure standing there uh the then we cut to the young lady in the main hall she wakes up all alone and she sees that the forbidden door is open uh cut back into the host lady's room she asks the creep to turn around he sees the red-eyed chauffeur uh the creep has a heart attack falls and dies the host lady is smiling so uh we have our first death and the plot thickens. So the young lady, she gets dressed and she enters the forbidden door. As she looks for the dude, uh, she sees all those weird paintings, more of those weird paintings and rats. Yeah, um, there's a lot of Hieronymus her- Bosch everywhere in this house. Yeah. Then uh, uh, her candle goes out. She hears a door open and then a dude grabs her and she's scared, but it's actually the, the her friend or the other young guy. Um, he said he found this tunnel to a crypt in a family chapel. Um we cut back to uh, uh, Elsa. She uh, goes back in time yet again. Here she has visions of her dad and her husband yelling at her that you know they're not perfect and most of this is all her fault. Her dad yelling how he's not a perfect man, but yo, he tried his best. The husband yelling, yeah, I might not be perfect, but you shut me away and like you're you're not even a wife to me, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so it's all these visions that she has all her fault. Uh, we're back to the present day and host lady visits Elsa. Elsa. It offers her, you know, because he could tell that she had a nightmare and stuff. It says, hey, I'll sleep with you here for a bit. And Elsa says, yeah, I, I do just need to sleep. So, you know, the host lady will stay there while she sleeps. Found um, chicka. No, no. <laughs> Well, the couple go exploring again, uh, and that is our next clip. This passage under the garden must have been built to reach the crypt of Martha Clinton's family. Whatever it is, it's a spooky place. That's very strange. Why? I don't see anything strange about it. Someone's removed the cover of this coffin. Hmm. Look. Julie Clinton, 1864 to 1942. When she died, she was nearly 80 years old. Julie Clinton? It means that Miss Clinton's story was true. But if she and her chauffeur were killed, how did we see that man on the way here? That's what I want to find out. Can you see anything? Nothing inside. Well? I don't understand it. She's either making fools of both of us with her fables about vampires, or there's something most peculiar going on around here. Do you think the vampire was her aunt? I'm not sure, but there's a lot of evidence to make Make me... you think so? Well, yes. If you're trying to scare me any more than I am already, you're wasting your time. I'm not trying to scare you. It's just that I'm trying to... Get 
the bottom of this goddamn mystery. And it's at this point I'm getting heavy Scooby-Doo vibes the very first time I watch this movie. Yeah. And also, that's the end of that 20 minutes before we head into the final 30. All right. He's seeing through a lot of stuff that the main lady who says that her name is Martha Clinton, but we're not really sure if that can even be trusted because so far he has disproved everything that she's had to say. She's not trying to hide just the rats or whatever it is that she's afraid of. She's trying to hide the fact that there is this pathway between the cemetery chapel and the house that goes underground. Yeah. Like she was trying to hide this crisscrossing catacomb pathway thing. And he's, yeah, he's, she's, she's, she's definitely trying to hide this area. Obviously her story's bumpkiss. He believes uh, like this whole thing's like, yeah, I could tell this story was bumpkiss. He he knows exactly that she was a liar. So And what's, not what's only the point. Yeah, but not only that, he is now trying to find out what her intentions are and like he's gonna start snooping around. And you say yeah. the lady gets dressed, but what she pretty much does is just zip up his leather jacket over top of her naked body. <laughs> on that the, is the, true. On the top half. And I just gotta say that the leather jacket as shirt look for this lady works so well. That outfit that she has in the catacombs, I could not stop staring at her. And well, I there's f- a scene back in the restaurant where she's like, it almost seems like she's coming out of the bathroom getting dressed, buttoning up her shirt. And it was like, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, but I really found this outfit's particularly fetching where she's got the, just the leather jacket as a top and the jeans. I was like, that fucking rocks, girl. You are rocking it. Go for it. We get it. You have a thing. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I just did. I, I really enjoyed that, and I wanted to kind of focus in on that. The catacombs are unbelievably fucking creepy. There is not, yes. there is not a scene down here that doesn't make you feel uncomfortable and scared. That's... <laughs> Also a fact, yeah. And the fact that they have even more of those god-awful fucking Bosch paintings that are, like, terrifying in a catacomb that leads to the family crypt is even more fucking creepy and terrifying. Like It is, really is. Like, what I want to know now that I'm the person that I am that has already seen this film is, when was that installed? Was that put in there by the people who originally owned the house? Because that's, like, decades of just building up creepiness. Or was this part of what was stated? for what was supposed to happen tonight. Yeah, that's really good. I think it was mainly staged. Okay, we'll talk about it more once we get revealed what was actually staged and what wasn't by the end of the film, and then we can kind of discuss it. But I just wanted to bring that up. Like, those, the the serious, creepy atmosphere, everything that's going on here, like, just how much of it is a part of what we're about to reveal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much is was all done before this huge reveal we're getting ready to have? Right. Like, at what point was this actually staged, or is it the original creepiness? Because those catacombs obviously had to be there between the house and then the chapel slash cemetery area for the family yeah. the crypt family crypt which is well of course for as old as the manor is and the fact that it's europe it's probably not that surprising and or creepy it's just still kind of creepy it's it's still just creeping the rest of us out <laughs> I mean, an underground catacomb to the family crypt is just fucking cool to me, but to everybody else, that's a big no-no for sleeping in that house at night. Uh, Yeah, I mean, and you gotta understand that. I mean, that's just, it's kind of weird. Right, I'm just saying for everybody else, I can see where that's a super no-no creep-out factor, where I'm going down there with just a flashlight, and I'm gonna spend some time down there. Yeah, and and just, uh, you know, in the quietness, (laughs) in the quiet times, in the the super secret dark night times. Right, I'm not going straight to the crypt to rob that rich-ass fucking family and what they may have left there. Of course not. We are good people. We would never rob rich people. That's terrible. What? (laughs) Who are we talking about? Let's move on. (laughs) Good idea. Uh, All right, the final 30. But although although this final 30 packs a a, a more of a wallop than the rest of the times all put together. The bulk of what everybody remembers about the film is in the final 30 minutes. Yeah, this is where a lot more of the story is going to happen. All right. So um, Elsa, she uh, rolls over and she looks and host lady is now old now. She's old and scary looking, kind of like the painting in her in her place. She looks exactly uh, so, like the fucking painting, yes. Yeah, so she runs away. Uh, she tries going out the front door, 
but the chauffeur man is there, so she closes it. I would run from that guy, too. Not only does he have a steering wheel sticking out of his chest, he's fucking gigantic! Yeah, all of that shit. It's, uh, it's a scary time. So, anyway, she then grabs, like, a log from the fire that's lit only at one end, so a perfect torch, and she enters the forbidden door as the host lady starts coming down the stairs. As she goes through the caverns and everything, she sees the asshole dude's wife. She's on a hook and dead. And at this point, Elsa passes out. The young couple, uh, they're checking the cemetery and they see, uh, the creeper dude who appears to be shooting at him. Uh, then they get close to him and they realize, well, he could have been shooting at him. He's dead and has been dead for a while, even though that gun is hot. Um, uh, then they, uh, look up and they see the chauffeur and the lady are there. Um, then the creep's body falls down. They look and then they look back up and the two are gone. The, the chauffeur and the old lady. And they are gonna decide they're going to take the body back to the house. They get back to the house, uh, and the host lady answers the doors. They're knocking on it, and that's our next clip. Now, please tell me what you were doing out there. Porter's dead. Dead. But how? Have you seen my wife? No. Why? Well, she just disappeared. Disappeared? Yes, we went to sleep last night, and when I woke up, there was nobody beside me. I took the liberty of knocking on Elsa's door. But there was nobody there, either. You're saying that both Elsa and your wife have disappeared? Yes. I've searched everywhere and found no trace. Oh, my heavens. What's the matter with Mr. Porter? He's dead, I'm afraid. I don't believe it. How did it happen? He had a heart attack. Probably brought on by a great shock. But we can't know for sure until there's an autopsy. I hate to change the subject. But I smell burning. So do I. Look, it's coming from there. You're right. I do not remember ever seeing this guy's wife actually die. You don't. You just see your body. All right. This is where people I can see would say that it feels like things are cut out, but she's just dead all of a sudden. Yeah, she's just dead all of a sudden, but kind of. So anyway, uh, the group (laughs) runs into the the area, and they find the fire and the guy's wife hanging there. Uh, That guy sees it. He runs out and collapses. The host lady goes to check on him. The young guy grabs Elsa and carries her out of the room as the young lady tries and puts out the fire. We see a man walking through uh, the fog. The young man, he leaves the lady and Elsa together locked in a room uh, with the gun. And he says he's going to get out of here and find the truth. So they bar- the young lady and Elsa barricade themselves in a room with the gun. He comes down there and he tells the host lady and the old dude, as they're both sitting there, that he's going to go make it to the next town and get help. They both are like, you won't be able to make it. He goes, I have to try. The host lady tells him that after she gets some, you know, doctors to help Elsa, to get the cops right away as he he walks away he waits till the door shuts and then he turns around and he sneaks right back there and he goes right back to the access to the crypt area so he that was a lie he's gonna find out what's going on here now we see a man he's walking around uh, uh and it's almost like he's taking pictures of the dead wife that's on the hook this man whoever's walking down here um the uh young lady she's getting elsa some clothes and uh she opens up uh, some uh, one of the wardrobes there and we see the dead la- the dead wife that uh, the asshole's wife her face is there and it comes at her uh they both run out of the room and all of a sudden we see the old lady is back and she's coming as well they're they're stuck in between the dead wife of the old lady, so they uh, lock themselves in a room in a different bedroom, and it's the bedroom of the old asshole and his wife. After they barricade the door, all of a sudden that man's wife she pops up in the bed. She's she had to take sleeping pills in order to fall asleep due to her insomnia, and she's all groggy and shit. She, she's not dead, so we don't know what's happening out there. It appears that she was dead in the basement, but she's been out cold and asleep in this bed all night. Yeah, yeah, this is. Uh, uh, so we don't know whose body that was, whose face that was coming at him, but it's all kind of horse shit and smelling horse shit. Yeah, whoever it was, whatever that was, it is not the wife. She's been drugged. Yeah. So, uh... 
Then we cut back to that one person, whoever this mystery person is, down there, and he plays a tape of all that breathing, hard breathing that we heard earlier. Uh, just then, this person looks out of the forbidden door, and they see the host lady there, and she takes off the old lady mask that she had on, and uh, and uh, all that makeup up, and throws it in the fire as the dead creepy dude stays on the couch. Um, then we cut to the young man who leaves the crypt, and he's attacked by the chauffeur. They fight. They have a really good fight. And the young man puts up a fight, but he gets choked out. As the chauffeur walks by the car, he takes a look at himself, and he takes off the chauffeur mask to show he's just some normal dude. Some hired muscle. Um, Although he looks a little weirder with the mask off and the hair revealed. You're like, whoa. Yeah, right. I was not expecting that. Like, stark red, right? Look at that. Flat top, too. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was not expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. Um, so uh, the ladies are who are in the bedroom, they're not doing well. Elsa's creep freaking out. Uh, the other lady won't wake up. The host lady then burns, uh, as I said, she burns the old lady mask. She's burning the, oh, everything. Then all of a sudden, the rude old dude shows up. He's in a black robe, and he's holding the mask of what was his, you know, the dead wife's face. So it was him wearing that. He throws it into the fire, and this is our final clip. My congratulations. It worked perfectly. Easily the best performance of your illustrious career. Too bad it wasn't a theater. It's curious to what point a human being can be terrorized. Porter's heart literally stopped beating. Else has been driven insane. And those two kids are convinced that Porter's body shot it. Without realizing that the only live bullet was the one left deliberately in the gun. And that all the others or blanks. We must destroy the loudspeakers and tape recordings as soon as possible. Igor will take care of that. Don't worry about it. It'll be dawn soon. We must hurry. I can just imagine the faces of the policemen when those two start talking about walking corpses and vampires. And when we tell them that nothing happened here at all? They'll probably end up in an asylum along with Elsa. Certainly. Uh, it's you. Everything went very smoothly. In fact, exactly as we planned it. There's minor detail that should be cleared up. The cost of the operation, we would like double. All right, so they knew these people were all going to be crossing paths, and he made sure that that Porter guy was stuck there by purposely hitting his car. Yes. Because he wanted him there. And then the uh, other accidents were pretty much one way, shape, or form. I think the only people who weren't expected to be there were the couple on the motorcycle. Yeah. They're the wild cards. Yes. Everyone else, in my opinion, is supposed to be there. Yeah, because his motorcycle kind of, he crashed it on his own, and they are the only other wild car because they probably tampered with the lady's car to make it happen or did something with having to do with the fog for that or accident to set take up. place. She knows the roads except for, you know, so she's going off memory, so they put an object in the way there. That's because she was heavily confused. She's like, no, I was going the right way. I shouldn't have ran into anything. So I think they put an obstacle there knowing that the fog would be there that night. Oh, that's a possibility. Yeah, I could totally see that even. Yeah, they, they might have yep. set it up as well. So uh, the motorcycle couple being the only wild card, I 100% agree with as well. We're not completely done yet, so let's move on. Yes. Well, all right. So... Uh, they, of course, the, this mystery man who comes up, uh, apparently played the whole thing. Well, what happens when you always ask the person who set up a nefarious plan for more money? Well, they bring, usually bring out a gun and they're threatening them. This person, we don't know who it is yet. Then the chauffeur walks in and the mystery person shoots the chauffeur. Uh, we see the ladies hear the gunshot, but the asshole's wife still cannot wake up. Um, the mystery man then shoots old dude, uh, he, then he takes Igor's gun, shoots the old dude with that, then he shoots the host lady down dead as she begs, then he throws the dead wife mask into the fire, uh, and then we see the man is Elsa's husband, so this is the person who's been setting all this up was Elsa's husband the whole time. Which is why he was one town yep. over banging somebody else. Yep. He puts the two different guns in the two different peeps' hands to make it look like it was a shootout. Um, then the young man, we, we cut back to him, he wakes up in the cemetery. Uh, Elsa's husband then takes down the wife, the dead wife mannequin, the fake mannequin that was hanging there. He cuts it up and he puts it in a big bag, you know, to help hide it. Um, the young man, he gets into the house and he sees the scene before him. He looks for the ladies and finally finds them in the bedroom. He says that they need to go to help get the cops. And she's like, well, I don't know. Should we leave Elsa? And, and this person, he goes, well, we, we got to go. We, we got, I mean, we got to get help. Um, the husband, he packs up the fake body. 
The two young people, they leave. Elsa then gets up and leaves the room. She walks downstairs. She trips and falls onto one of the bodies. Um, but she grabs the gun that the body was holding. Her husband walks out. Elsa sees him. And she shoots her husband a lot. Also, she sees her father as she also shoots him. So she lost her mind and keeps shooting, killing them, killing her husband. I think she pretty much figures it out when her husband's there what happened. I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe not uh, because she's been like seeing these visions because she also had the vision she was shooting her father. So I think she's just fucking fed up with those two and wants them dead. (laughs) Well, the man and her father were both people she would want to kill and she's pretty much been driven to the brink by everything that's happened to her tonight. So if she's believing everything that's happening, she may just be shooting just because what she's seeing is something she needs to destroy. I mean, this is very true as well. I'm just, yeah. I'm putting it out there. Yeah. So she, then Elsa falls. She kind of has her own little paper clips moment as she cries. We leave with the young couple. They're on their bike, hitting the main road. The sun's coming up. The fog's gone. Roll credits. All right, so that couple's not there at all in this equation. You take them out completely, and the only thing that you have is Elsa comes down after being driven mad and ends up shooting her husband, who double crosses everybody that helped him. Yes. So that although the other people tried to double cross him, I want more money too. Right. Obviously, but what I'm kind of getting at here is he probably was going to kill them anyway. Probably, I think so. That's <laughs> kind of was it, it hitting me at that everyone was going to die. He was going to hide everything. And he was just going to make it look like elsa had gone crazy right but the kids not like the kids on the bike that are there the husband may or may not have known that so he wouldn't have gotten away with it anyway because they are actually there but they don't affect the outcome of what was going to happen this night in any way shape or form other than possibly offering elsa a modicum of comfort and helping her feel slightly safe in certain parts when they're around and then snooping around when they shouldn't be sussing things out that it's you know old man winter trying to rob his rich wife of her stuff (laughs) by making her go crazy and put her in an asylum so he's in control of it and he can do what he wants. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And then killing everybody who wanted more money from him to keep quiet, so just to make sure that it's over with, which he was pretty much going to do anyway. And what a dick. So, so the kids go and they're going to spin whatever kind of a tale. But when the cops get there, they're just going to find a completely devastated Elsa in some kind of an odd state who may end up killing herself by a cop for pulling a gun on them as well. But at the same time, then they're going to find Elsa's fingerprint that she had shot her husband dead. And then the only person left there is going to be this sleeping wife. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's the part that I absolutely love. The fucking scumbag lawyer is clearly yeah. in on this, but he drugged his wife and then participated in all this other stuff, you know? Yeah, exactly. You you think they would have, like, you think they would have used the dummy in such a way to where they would have had noises, like, and made it sound like the lady was, like, slowly dying or had blood come off of it, that they would have done something? Like, this is a relatively bloodless film. And I get it that yeah. the, the whole entire plot is to gaslight uh, Elsa into insanity so that her husband can get her money. I totally get that. But when you're first watching it, they have to sell the spook factor a little bit more because you pretty much can figure it out. I mean, like they use the actress to pretend like she's a dummy until we see it later on that it's supposed to be a dummy. And then it's clearly a dummy that doesn't look anything like the actress that was hanging there, you know? And so we're led to believe that the husband who's involved on this made a mold of his wife's head for these purposes. Yeah, he must have probably Probably, you know, she has insomnia, probably gave her sleeping pills and then had something made of her. <laughs> Casting someone's head when they're unconscious from a sleeping pill is really fucking dangerous and dumb. Yeah, it doesn't seem like this guy would probably have cared, though. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, the, the whole entire plan, I admit, runs on a whole lot of convenience. And yes, this is pretty much a Scooby-Doo giallo. But yeah, you get like a shootout of death at the very end. And it's more of like a gaslight film than a giallo to me. And like yeah, just straight up horror for gaslighting, you know? That's that's what it seems like, yeah. Because that's what I think it is. It's it's I don't it's more like oh, I don't know about a gaslight film, but it's 
Uh, well, they're trying to drive her insane. Like they're literally trying to break a human mind from fear. Um, in yeah, a in that's a haunted true. house. I mean, it's, yeah, it's he, like he, haunted. Apparently, he can't seem to kill her, so he's gonna <laughs> do something else. <laughs> yeah. Well, if he kills her, he doesn't inherit anything. Apparently, he needs to just drive her crazy so that he can be the executor of her estate. Yeah, that's uh, that's true. Yeah. So yeah, maybe if she dies, he doesn't get anything, or it's too you know dangerous, or it's too gross. Or or it's, I don't know, it's fucking, it's something. It's too uh, suspicious. There's a fucking word. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's that she's just, it's too suspicious if she dies. But this is a lot of fucking work to try and drive another human being crazy. So clearly she must have enough money to make it worth it. This is basically like the same plot line of Haunted Honeymoon, only they're trying to scare him so that he's no longer afraid of thunderstorms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, she's obviously, I mean, obviously it's an, a tremendous amount of wealth. And, uh, you know, we kind of heard him even talk about it, how, you know, how much it was and, or like how she wasn't the same after all of that happened. So, or, you know, she got control of it. Yeah. She kind of turned into her father a little bit because of the resentment that she had for her dad. She turned into what she hated, her father. Yeah. And the whole reason that she dated the guy, we even see that in the flashbacks. She only gave the guy the chance just because her father hated him. She literally just married him for that or just started getting with him again for that and that reason alone. Even to go so far as probably the first time that they had sex back together as a couple was in her father's fucking bed. Yeah, probably you're right. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's what was going on. She definitely had some issues. The only reason that she is with him at all. So he probably knows that it's not going to be too much of a push. Although the direction that they end up taking, I'm not sure I understand why, other than it's just a work to get us to this spooky haunted house film where they're driving a person slowly insane. Yeah, and it's... That's horrific. (laughs) But again, people will do fucked up shit for money. Yeah. I mean, it's completely implausible, but it makes for a really cool fucking horror film as you're watching the whole way through. Yeah. And (laughs) the wacky kind of zany nature of everything and how things don't really seem all that real or scary to you. When you get the reveal at the end, it doesn't really make you feel cheated because what's real is the fact that this man is trying to slowly drive his wife insane and is killing people that are in the way of that being able to happen effectively. Yeah. Just, yeah, right. Just for the sake of getting her out of the way for her money. Like, that's even more horrific than the fact that a witch is resurrecting from the dead and all the supernatural shit. For me. Yeah. Personally. The fact that they would be so brazen as to use the supernatural shit to further their cause just makes it that much cooler for me. Yeah, good. You know, I mean, good for them that they had a plan and they worked on it. <laughs> Yes, it's nefarious as fuck, but when you want the money, you're going to do nefarious as fuck. Yeah, I mean, you, when you feel like you really need it. So, But the guy turned out to be exactly who her father said it was, and maybe she just can't handle that kind of thought, too. I think that may be why she shot him, because I'm sure she had to know that he had something to do with the hell that she'd just been through that night, or, or whatever. Maybe she finally just saw him for who he really was, and just yeah. stopped worrying about all the money that's in her life, because, you know, this hell nightmare her life clear her to her for whatever reason watching her blow him away is one of the most satisfying endings of a movie for me personally yeah that was that was really good stuff i like that a lot <laughs> that was that was great i know she's <laughs> i know she is wrecked as a human being and she's got a lot of therapy work to go through but you know what this may have been a wake-up call for her this is clearly the rock bottom that she needed to start getting help and becoming a better person yeah exactly because she was for her she was harboring some serious shit and doing some pretty horrible shit herself apparently yeah apparently things weren't all that great i mean apparently she wasn't doing all that great for herself either because yeah she turned into her dad so (laughs) right she needed to get some kind of counseling before all of this took place and hopefully this will be another thing that she can work through via therapy and lots of work on her own yeah I, i don't think she's gonna be back I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. So now that we have that even more down note that this woman's life is ruined, even though we watched her blow away her asshole of a husband. Yeah. I guess I'll just throw it to the Resurrects with Graveyard Girl to try and cheer us up, and we'll do some PSYOP news after this. Fucking A.
That is Resurrex with Graveyard Girl, which I am pretty sure that I may or may not have played on this show before. But if you're not listening to the Pirate Radio edit, you're not hearing it anyway. But you can probably yeah. find it out there. Resurrex with Graveyard Girl. They'll never find it. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> well, you should make them feel better by giving them some psyop news. I found this story. I did the work. <laughs> this is mine. Matt did his job, everybody. So this is... No, no props go out to anybody. <laughs> Afraid of a job. Uh, swinging gone wrong. Crazed woman attacks couple with samurai sword after they refuse to have a threesome. Don't threaten to cut off my cock for $60. Whoa. <laughs> The loving three-way with a corpse? Mm. Although the, this wasn't this wasn't that. Uh... It, there's actually video of this, so uh, uh, so I mean that should be pretty it. good. So here's Matt's quick review of the video as he watches it. This is like traces of death, fucked a porno. Uh, so okay. Uh, swinger um, who's forty, used to have sex with the couple whose nicknames are Air thirty five and his wife Note thirty eight. It's going to cost But they cut ties with her cock. over a year ago after refusing an invite for group sex with Um's Bangkok based boyfriend. And we're back to Dicks. Um subsequently broke off her relationship with that man, but the couple claims she continued to pester them for threesomes, despite ha- them having rejected her advances on a number of occasions. I have the most confused direction right now. I don't know why. This is fucking hilarious. Yeah, the 40 year old ignored the cold shoulder and continued to harass Aaron Note, who live in uh, Pechabun, until one final refusal on Monday caused her to snap. I think that's going in the spank bank. Outrageous footage has emerged, uh, which shows a long-haired um standing outside the couple's house, swinging what appears to be a samurai sword towards the pair as they sheltered behind their front door. I've had seven dicks inside of me. The attacker, wearing a sequined blue dress, took the sword out of its hilt to show the couple the razor-sharp blade before resheathing it and attempting to use it as blunt force weapon. Don't threaten to cut off my cock for $60. <laughs> where, where did that one come from? Jesus. It was somebody owed somebody 60 bucks. Uh, and they were gonna yeah, they were gonna like cut off their balls. We did it with fancy because that here's another. That's one. right. Dick and balls yeah, yeah, yeah. are worth a lot more than sixty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. She later rammed the open blade through the crack between the front door and the door frame, but miraculously no one was hurt. That's Jesus. insane. This I mean, there's video of this. <laughs> it must be they, a they, ring video, right? No, no, it's someone they did it on their phone while the, the, she was. There's a the couple did it while she was uh, all over them. That's insane. Uh, speaking to Dave note said we kept quiet about what ha- was happening for a long time because we're swingers and we didn't want anyone to know society bail, doesn't view well, I w- could probably fix that for a blowy that society doesn't, doesn't view what we do in a good light and we didn't want our neighbors knowing the see if everyone was just cool with everyone else this shit wouldn't be so bad I'm advocating corpse fucking here she states we <laughs> they had they, she states that they had some really great times with um in the past but now she's crazy and desperate for sex and they can't help her <laughs> apparently Ooh, is that me getting a metal rod shoved up my rectum? When she turned up with the sword, we felt we had to go public and shame her. Yeah, you think? You think now's a good enough time to do that? Uh, well, probably, it okay, was probably okay. before the sword. Not, it was probably before the sword. Uh, okay. The point where she is harassing you, you definitely need to start looking into an ex- a restraining order, particularly when it's like, look, we do not want to have sex with you anymore and we've cut ties with you and you're not leaving us alone. That's when it's time to start thinking about a restraining order right then and there because this is what it will eventually escalate to if, yeah. they, if they are not forced to get a clean if break. they don't take no for an answer, then you got to get the hell out of there yeah it's uh that's a no good that's a no bueno situation for everyone involved get out and and alert people to what's going on does this make me gay i I, I mean i don't know i don't know if anything makes you gay um because i like abuse and free drugs okay well yeah all right yeah sure i started Uh, the couple after that yeah i sure did uh, the couple said they had not complained to police about the alleged attack scene in the video and hoped that Um's newfound notoriety would be enough to discourage her for further harassment. I'm going to nope. kick shame you for the stabbing fetish, okay? <laughs> 
That's a good one. Uh, Note's husband added, we avoided her because she started behaving badly. She even went to our house and talked to our son just to harass us into having sex with her. I have a raging erection. Er said he believed that Um may have fallen in love with him, and perhaps Note, too, reasoning that the 40-year-old nymphomaniac may have become delusional when the pair broke things off and left her alone. Man, that is just the worst hand job ever. Uh... (laughs) Uh, Why are you coming in public movie polls? So (laughs) they stated they did not report her to police then because it was embarrassing, but it had gone too far now. I just want her to disappear from our lives. I would say. Yeah, he said, I felt she had a crush on me. I thought it was just a simple attraction, but when she was heartbroken, she turned crazy. The woman eventually left the scene after Air had spent minutes pleading with her to calm down and go. Air said that no one was hurt in the incident, but the couple expressed worry that their scorned medmate would return to intimidate them further once the heat is tied down. There you go, man. That's some um, that's some stuff right there. That got uh, dark real fucking fast, though, didn't it? Yeah, I, yeah. I, but they didn't even alert the cops. I don't know. There were some funny parts in it, at least. <laughs> I mean, the behavior is clearly she has a disorder and there's something very wrong with her to go that far. Well, I think she had a boyfriend and everything was fine, but I I do believe she probably fell in love with one or both of the people in that coupling and she just wanted to be with them and then she just has problems there. Okay, but there's a certain point to where a rational person with the right thinking of a brain would not go to the point of threatening them with a samurai sword. Well, yeah, I'm not saying she you know you know 100 percent there but uh <laughs> i mean like in fact I'm, I'm not saying that at all <laughs> I've, I've had some like obsessive like i can't let go kind of love but i never got to the i'm stabbing your fucking <laughs> door jam with a <laughs> samurai to, sword kind of obsessive it's love time, it's time to go check out uh my samurai sword usage <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not I'm I, I have never felt that dejected and hurt and in need of like acknowledgement of being alive from people in my life like ever. Yeah. so I just I can't understand the state with which you would get there so yes it might be a little bit for me to assume that maybe there is some kind of other mental health issue going on besides the fact that she felt heartbroken and well, dejected there's definitely uh, another there's there's some mental health health going on other than the fact that she got dejected because to to escalate to that level you know like something has to be there to cause that you know what i'm saying yeah and obviously if the couple did everything that they said that they did and we're going to take them at their word in this because why wouldn't we um Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know uh they did nothing wrong other than to refuse to continue to have a relationship with her and she just grew to be more obsessed with one or both of them yeah that's uh that's definitely how all of this sounds. <laughs> yeah, so just don't if you get that far to where you want to destroy things because that person won't acknowledge that you're there, that's not love anymore. That's that's something that's unhealthy, folks. And don't don't be there. Yeah, don't don't do that shit, guys. You're you're, you're worth more than that. <laughs> And there are people out there that will care for you and will make you feel loved yeah. in the way that you need to feel loved. Just not the exactly. couple that is repeatedly telling you to leave them alone. Yeah, they're not going to be the people who you're looking for for this love. <laughs> but it can be out there for you and it will be out there for you because if a hideous fucking chud like Matt Syop can find love, so can you. I mean, you're not wrong, but it was a dick move to say it out loud. <laughs> yeah, I think we should just end the show on that note. So here's the ending Legion promo and after that we're going to have Merciful Fate with the grave. <laughs> if you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network like Cinema Psyops, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Mean Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a wide spread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. 
horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. Yes, merciful fucking fate and the grave. Oh my god, that guitar sound, that tone. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good, man. Is I'm just fucking. Stoked. All right with you? I fucking love merciful fate. It's got me all amped up and ready to fucking close out the show, my dude. Word up. <laughs> so let us not tarry about. Let's get this over with, so the folks can get on with their fucking lives, right? Yeah, everyone wants to. You know, everyone's got shit to do. We're all we're all busy. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's living a life that's post pandemic. Multiple question marks um, well, you better yeah, that, there's gotta be a lot of question marks of that shit <laughs> <laughs> like are we mid pandemic still or is this just the eye of the storm uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know man I don't know the kind of shit that's going on around right now is weird if you'd like to find previous episodes that are either pre during or declared post and found out later to be during a pandemic you can find all those previous instances at legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops dash podcast <laughs> it was a lot to get out that was yeah that was a lot man you almost ran out of breath on that one Good thing I have lung capacity like a motherfucker. What? If you'd like to find the repository for all things Cinema PsyOps memes, you're going to want to head first to Instagram. That is the first place that they get dropped thrice daily during the working day for the working person. That is Cinema underscore PsyOps on the Instagram. Oh, all over that Insta. <laughs> all over the gram, man. Got to be on the gram. Got to learn. <laughs> yes, he's on the Instagram to follow the models and hasn't even acknowledged that I exist there as cinema underscore psyops. How dare you? I acknowledge it. I just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> just don't follow it. That's all. <laughs> You can also find me on Twitter, which is the next place that the memes get shared after they are dropped off at the Instagram cinema underscore psyops. Yep. Those memes are mixed in with all the porn bots. <laughs> That's he what... doesn't know what he's retweeting. <laughs> I'm at court underscore psyop there, and you don't know how much I dread that actually happening because you are right. <laughs> I have no idea if I just retweeted that or not. He doesn't know if he's retweeting porn bots or fucking memes. He doesn't know. He doesn't even care. Listen to him. <laughs> no, I care because of Jesus I don't want to retweet some of the shit I'm into. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. With with our fan base, I, they're fine. They're fine. <laughs> I don't think you can shock them. <laughs> That's fair, but also I don't want to try. <laughs> yeah, all right. I get, I get you there. <laughs> One of the places where you want to be real careful with how you do the shocking is our Facebook group because those rules suck there. Cinema PsyOps in Facebook groups. Yeah, they'll be coming for you. <laughs> For things you posted seven or eight years ago in this group, I know because it's happening all the fucking time. All the time. <laughs> I'm currently there as Court PsyOps on Facebook. I'm occasionally waving at you between tumbleweeds because nobody else is there anymore. Yeah, right? No shit. <laughs> and if you just like to reach out to me the old-fashioned way because you got to write some kind of a dissertation or you just like the long-form email or you just want to write something a lot more formal like Dear Sir or Madam, cinemapsyopscourt at gmail.com. Hit me up with the format you like on the email, I suppose. Yeah, why not? Well, while you're out there trying to figure out just how you want to <laughs> keep in contact with those that you love, kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bitch.
yo, yo. Hey, what's up? You hear me? Yep. Hold on one second. All right. And I am recording. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, man. My microphone's getting weird, and I don't hear myself. Well, that's weird. Oh, I know what it is. Hang on. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, there you go. And <laughs> I still hear you, so we're all right. Yeah, it was still coming through. I could see it bouncing on all the various LED displays for my compressor and all that other stuff that I was talking super loud, and all my gates were opening up, but that fucking aux cord that I never replaced, every now and then I just had to put a little weight on it. Got to put a little weight on it. <laughs> you put your weight on it, and then it works. Gotta give it a little something. <laughs> on the good foot. Yeah, put a little stank on it. I mean, I try to. Uh, I got six in total, or eight. Eight in total. Okay, yeah, I opened the yep. wrong thing. Let me delete all of that so I got the right clips. Don't want to do last week's again. No, no, God, no, no, we lived through last week enough. Isn't that enough? <laughs> Here, we just have some great psychological torture. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Shh. Don't spoil the review. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm just pulling the clips over right now, so I'll, and then uh, I'll be ready to go. Cool, cool. Yeah, it didn't have a usable trailer for this, so. Uh, All right, let's I see. I wouldn't doubt it. Not watching it, I was like, yeah, I bet there won't be much of a trailer for this one. Yeah, it was more or less just uh, sound effects and clips and stuff, the one that I did find, um, yeah. which I'm really not that shocked about, and it seems like maybe there was never one really made for English language or English-speaking what? countries anyway. Or well, at least, yeah, at least I'm ways almost over here positive any dubbing was well after the fact of almost everyone else who had been in this movie probably was dead. <laughs> oh, no, that's not the case. Um, oh, okay. It was an international dub for other, you know, English language speaking countries, ah. but it just really didn't make a legal release in the States until just recently. <laughs> Alright, I'm ready to roll. Can you hear this? Yeah. I sure can. Yeah. Alright, so let's uh, fucking do this. Uh, murder what? Mansion. What? Or The Murder Mansion, a.k.a. The Maniac murder Mansion. Mansion. I prefer Maniac Mansion, but we'll call it Murder Mansion. What the hell? Whatever works. Okay, intro started. Smoke them if you got them. So, let me tell you something. Ah. Hey, everybody, don't eat the mashed I potatoes. I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest it. My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasts. Also, Court was looking pretty sus by the mac and cheese, so stay away from that, too. Delicious. Not that, but also. I don't have yes. interpersonal no, relationships with mac and cheese. I just eat too much costs, of it. Cost for good <laughs> microphones and so doesn't? These are all super loud. I can tell they weren't leveled. <laughs> I fucking don't know why they're this loud. The fog isn't usually this enveloped. It'll be gone by morning, I'm sure. I did if all the leveling. If you care to remain here tonight, you are most welcome. Maybe your settings got pooched. Well, oh, fuck. I'll there are only three again. bedrooms available, however. Great. So that's after the I'm just going to turn the rest of them down to where I've been the turning the first car. couple and down so it doesn't blow oh. out our ears. So I went to see what yeah. was going on. Oh, those paintings, uh, by the way, are Hieronymus Bosch paintings. Okay. So some folks may have recognized in the group, I posted something where uh, I got so high, now I'm stuck in a Hieronymus Bosch painting. <laughs> So, and it's actually like a cat sitting there, you know, like in front of a Hieronymus Bosch painting. Okay, yes. All right, never mind. No. Never mind. I'm confused. Move on. All righty then. <laughs> um, My shit's kicking in. I got to settle down and focus. Yeah, all right, all right. You listen to me. Yeah, this is where uh, a lot more of this story is going to happen. So, uh, yeah, those of us that are listening along to what Matt has to say and may have gotten way too high during the duration of this episode, pay attention. That was oddly specific. Show, Thanks for taking that one on the chin like a champ. That was awesome. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> Hello, it made for a great way to break show. the episode hero, up. Hero, go yeah, right? <laughs> Good way to end that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get it. Three, two, one. trying to figure out just how you want to keep in contact with those that you love kick the fuck out of this week and make it your bitch <laughs> that's pretty presumptuous that they love me yeah they should <laughs> i do a lot of work for them i hope they yeah. do yeah 
fuck him. What do you, I mean, you tell him they'll love you. I can't. Make him show it to you with baby oil. <laughs> what, am I going to show up at their door with a samurai sword if they don't? I hope not. <laughs> I think we learned from that news story tonight. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> you should also probably quit recording. Oh, yeah, I probably should. All right, I'm done.